Cynthia, you are a senior sister, nurse for more than 20 years. You're in charge of the critical care unit at St George's Hospital in South London, my local hospital. Um, have you ever seen anything like what we're going through at the moment? No, never. After all these years, um, and I should say as well, I'm one of the senior sisters. There's very many of us um, in charge. I just tend to be on charge on certain days. But no, in all my nursing career, I couldn't believe it. And it just changed overnight, it seemed. When you are in charge, and as you say, there's a team of you, and when we pay tribute to every single one of you, but when you are in charge in critical care, you must see loss all the time. I mean, critical care can't save every single life. At the moment, it must at some points get overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Um, it, it's, yeah, for all of us, and particularly the junior nurses, I work part time, but for the junior nurses, some of which have only been in critical care a few months, they came to critical care to learn and be guided and to train to be skilled nurses, and they're now suddenly thrown in at the deep end and doing amazingly. The, 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 the critical care nurses are incredible as are the background staff, the matrons, and all our staff who organise and plan every day. Uh, Anthony, what was it that inspired you to start writing these emails to share the experiences that you, you were going, in, going through? And then, did you ever expect the reaction you got from the back of it? No, no. I just emailed a few friends. I looked last night, it was 19 people. I emailed 19 people to see, because nurses love biscuits and crisps and chocolate bars. <laughs> And I just emailed a few friends, local people, no one medical, and just said, anyone would like to support nurses? Because the morale was not great and I'd seen a lot of tears. Please drop biscuits and cakes at my door. And I had bin bag after bin bag just arrive with all sorts of things, took them into work, we piled them up high. We couldn't, no one could believe it. Mm. And then it just seemed to escalate. And a, and a group of friends took this on, created um, critical NHS um, and from there, it's gone on and on and on, and they now have raised £100,000. It's, it's remarkable, and, and I tweeted about it um, at, and contributed, in fact, early on, because, of course, you know, you're local to me. It's not just sweet treats, it's also meals, isn't it? Because often I can imagine if you're working all the hours God sends, you simply cannot get out to get food, yeah, get been, lunch, get been... dinner. Yeah, that's great because you don't have to think about taking food to work anymore. Um, you have that choice to go to work and there's food there. Um, a friend dropped off some croissants at the weekend. Uh, we have hot meals three times a day. We distribute them evenly amongst all the COVID ICU areas. But they also that's extended to the rest of the hospital now on several occasions. Um, accident and emergency and other areas. And the staff are really thrilled. The reaction's amazing. You, uh... And it seems to have gone on... As Escalating from that, yeah. Uh, you wrote this diary um, in emails picked up by the Daily Mail. And I think for some people, the details were, were quite striking. Um, for instance, uh, April 12th to the 20th, week four, you wrote, we keep a diary for patients so that when they recover, they can know their journey. If they don't survive, we know these diaries are a comfort to the family. We brush patients' teeth, we change their position. We talk to them even if they are unconscious. We explain to the families, we wash hair. We smuggle in a dog to visit. We put a favorite teddy in the bed. We respect religion, race, sexuality. I have repositioned a bed to face Mecca and dropped off a Valentine's card for an elderly patient's wife. A junior doctor told me, when this is done, so am I. No amount of money could make me stay. Are there some people, Anthea, who were just yeah, it's overwhelmed true. by this? Anthea, can you hear me? Are there some people who are overwhelmed during this experience? Yeah, many of us, all of us at some time, any of the nurses, the critical care nurses and the support workers that are working alongside us are overwhelmed. Now, patient-nurse ratio has changed. Um, we're having to guide other nurses who've never stepped foot in a critical care unit, so they're quite frightened as well. Yeah. We're, we have PPE on, so it's quite hard to communicate. Yeah. And it must be so scary for the patients as well. 
Cla uh, Claudia, for you, obviously, you were coming back from university. I think your mum said that one of your friends was doing a job and you thought, well, it would be great if I could volunteer and do something really worthwhile in the hospital. And then this opportunity came up to work alongside mm -hmm. her and get an insight into what she's seeing at the front line. Uh, on the one hand, it must have been very exciting to be in that sort of environment. But I guess it, it was also quite um, scary because you're putting yourself in harm's way. What's it been like for you? Claude, we might have lost the link. I'm going to ask you again. I, I imagine that as exciting as it might be to work on the front line and see your mum at work, it might be quite scary as well. What's the experience of working in the hospital been like for you? It's been sad. It's been scary. It's been exhilarating. I mean, it's completely different and outside anything I've ever done before. Um, and, yeah, it has been really scary at times, but also I think I've just been blown away by the commitment of the nurses and the staff around me um, and the sense of camaraderie of everyone just sticking together and working together to um, fight this unseen enemy. Mm. And I've, I've really, really enjoyed the environment and seeing um, my mum in action has made me so proud. And so it has been, it has been scary at times, but... I'm so glad to be doing it. So, I, I, Gloria, like you, I grew up with a mother who was... My mum was a ward sister uh, for many, many years. And I know what it's like to be the child of someone who works in the medical profession because they have very little patience for any sort of ailment. Uh, they tend not to be particularly <laughs> sympathetic. Uh, nothing's ever as bad as we think it is. Um, is it interesting seeing your mum sort of showing that professional care in her workplace. And actually, I wonder whether, Anthea, uh, you equally must be incredibly proud of Claudia putting herself in that position. Oh, it's amazing, yes. Um, it seems like only a moment ago, I was wandering around at work pregnant with her. Um, and I talk to all my colleagues about her. They hear her name a lot. So it's lovely for them to meet and work alongside her as well. Do you worry for her, Anthea? I'm just reading your diary again, um, week five. If this is the front line, then we are fighting a war without weapons. One of our doctors who has worked in Afghanistan said he feels the dramatic level of trauma is somehow worse than what he experienced out there. I mean, this, it, it's such a tough environment. The fact that your daughter wanted to come in and help, were you concerned? Uh, a little bit. We did talk about that uh, before and I felt that it was her decision. I didn't want to put her under any pressure. But we're well trained in how to use the PPE. Um, and I felt that if I was going to be at work, I was coming home from work as well. So she would have contact with me. Um, we did we did talk about it, but no, I, I can't think like that. It, <clears throat> it's like if I was concerned for myself. We just get on and do the job and wear the PPE and... Um, there's a huge amount of hand washing, so all the deliveries of hand cream have been most welcome. And Anthea, you said, I mean, you, I'm sure, pretty tough and able to, um, to deal with a lot of things, but you described the fact that you cried at work for the first time in a very long time. Yeah, I haven't cried at work for a long time. I mean, every now and again, something sort of rocks you and you might come home and cry or your eyes fill up with tears, especially if you're identifying with a family or you get particularly close to a patient. But seeing some of the things I saw, and for me personally, um, the death and not being able to manage the end-of-life care in a way I would normally like to, that, that was very difficult. And I think once I cried, I cried and cried and cried. I think that was quite difficult for some of the staff when they heard about it. One of the receptionists said, well, if you cry, then it is really bad. Yeah. Um, but I've seen a lot of tears from lots of people, not just the nurses, the doctors, all sorts of people.